What's up guys? Welcome to part four of how to start your fitness journey. In part one, we discussed mindset, both commitment and consistency, so that you can ensure that you stick with this long enough to see the results you want to see. In part two, I provided you a super simple excuse proof workout plan that you can do literally anywhere at any time with no equipment. And in part three, we covered the fundamental movement patterns, which we use to create well-balanced workouts. In this video, I want to talk about how to take those movements and make progress in a few different ways so that we're getting better with them over time and ultimately getting the physical results that we all want to see. We'll also briefly talk about how to make certain body weight exercises more difficult or easier depending on your skill level because it's not as intuitive as using free weights where you can simply add or remove weights from the bar. When it comes to putting on muscle or getting better at a certain calisthenic skill, growing in the gym really just comes down to making progress in some measurable way. So imagine you're trying to run a five minute mile. Every time you went out for a run, you would logically aim to try and run just a little bit faster than the previous time you ran, right? The same concept applies to strength training and the term that's commonly used for this is progressive overload. To keep it simple, it's the process of continually increasing the demand that's put on your muscles. Over time, you literally aim to make your workouts harder. Fun, right? Like the running example earlier where you aim to run just a little bit faster each time you go out for a run, the most obvious way to do this is by slowly increasing the amount of weight that you lift. If you squat 100 pounds one day, the next week you would aim to squat 105 pounds, the week after that 110 pounds, and so on. But that's not the only way to apply progressive overload. In addition to increasing the weight, we can also increase the reps, increase the number of sets we do, increase the time under tension, as well as the frequency in which we do the exercises. All of these will give you results through progressive overload, but some of them are more sustainable and realistic than others. Increasing frequency can work, lifting twice a week instead of once a week, but eventually you're training so often that your body doesn't have the time to rest and recover. So all of those tactics work and they can be used to make progress in the gym, but the most common ways you'll be applying progressive overload is by increasing the amount of weight that you lift or increasing the number of reps that you do. Since progressively getting better over time is our primary goal, it's important that we track our progress. Do not rely on your memory for this. Buy a notebook, get an app, or use the notes app on your phone. Personally, I like to use the app and the strong app is the one that I use. Track what you do every time you're in the gym and set a goal to beat yourself as often as possible. So track what you're doing because when you start a workout, you should know what exercises you're doing, how much weight you'll be lifting, and how many reps you're going for. Now with free weights, making an exercise easier or harder is as easy as adding or removing weight. But with body weight exercises, it can require a little bit more thinking or maybe a little bit more Googling. But there are two helpful tricks to keep in mind that will serve you 90% of the time. If the exercise requires any pushing or pulling, pay attention to where your hands are relative to your feet. If your hands are above your feet, the exercise is going to be easier. If your hands are below your feet, the exercise will be harder. Let me illustrate this point with a push-up. If we assume a normal push-up is on the normal difficulty setting, we can make it easier by getting our hands above our feet by doing an incline push-up. Similarly, we can make this exercise more difficult by doing the opposite, getting our hands below our feet by doing a decline push-up. Now keep in mind, this is just one way to think about it and just one way to make it easier or harder. You could always make the push-up harder by strapping on a weighted vest or by doing a variation like a tuck planche push-up. Similarly, you could do knee push-ups instead of doing incline push-ups. Those are all totally valid ways of making the exercise easier or harder, but the hand in relation to the foot trick is just one thing to keep in mind just in case you don't have a weighted vest around to make the exercise easier, but you still want to do a harder version of a push-up. We can apply this same concept to an exercise like the bodyweight row as well. The closer we are to standing where our hands are above our feet, the easier a bodyweight row is. But when we have our feet above our hands with our body at more of a decline angle, the bodyweight row gets harder. Now let's look at another bodyweight exercise, the L-sit. And this is a good exercise to look at because there's no pushing or pulling involved in the exercise. You're just holding a static position. So if you can't do an L-sit or other static exercises, how do you make them easier? 
It's all about adjusting your center of gravity, and to do this, you tuck your legs in closer to your body. And once again, we can apply this same logic to other static holds, like the front lever. We pull our legs in close with a tuck front lever to make it easier, and we extend our legs out to make it harder. Whether you're trying to become a faster runner, a better musician, or a more skilled painter, getting better all comes down to making progress. And just like those skills, getting a more muscular physique also comes down to making progress in the gym. The good news is that it's actually easier to measure and track progress in the gym than it is with a skill like learning how to play the guitar or learning how to draw. The bad news is it tends to hurt a little bit more. But once again, the soreness and the sweat is all a sign that you're doing the right thing. So if anything, look at this as an opportunity to take advantage of the advantages you have in the gym with such an easy and measurable way to quantify and track your progress. Go into the gym with a plan, track what you're doing, and focus on being better than the version of you that walked in the gym last week. If you like this video, please consider liking the video and maybe even subscribing to the channel. And if you have any questions about any of the material that I covered in this video, please feel free to leave a comment below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.